Welcome to Al Jazeera. In the 10 years since Al Jazeera English has been on air. Welcome to the world news from Al Jazeera. The way in which we've gathered and broadcast news to our audiences has drastically changed, which in turn has influenced the way stories are covered and how we interact with you, our audience. What was once seen as futuristic has become the norm, as social media has become central to our lives and led to the birth of citizen journalism. When disaster strikes, Twitter is often on the scene. As far back as 2008, during the attacks in Mumbai, when Twitter had only 6 million members worldwide, people were providing instant eyewitness accounts of the unfolding tragedy to the rest of the world. Where Twitter played a really important role was in, international, uh, in the international context. For the first six hours or so, the coverage of the terrorist attack on international news channels was patchy at best. Even after that, international news channels were struggling to find context on the Mumbai terrorist attack. And for international audiences, I think Twitter became a really important source of news. The death of the Iranian protester Neda Aga Sultan in 2009 was picked up by major news bulletins and became one of the most iconic moments of those protests, but only after it was picked up from YouTube. Now, news bulletins regularly contain shaky footage recorded on phones from people in the middle of breaking news events. I believe that now, from this point onwards, every time there's a news, news story breaking out in any reasonably connected city in the world, it will probably break out via a mobile phone, either on Twitter in the form of a text message, or on YouTube in the form of a video, or on Flickr in the form of a photograph, or, or a service like that. And I think we should assume that this is going to happen from here on and reserve a surprise for situations when it doesn't happen. So what does the future hold? Crystal ball gazing is always a dangerous business, especially in this fast-moving world of technology. But we think 360-degree and virtual reality news bulletins will be part of the future. I think we're going to see lots of different types of applications. There's going to be entertainment, there's going to be education, there's going to be gaming. And I think, uh, you know, I, I think document, uh, documentary work, journalism is going to be a part of that as well. We can actually tell stories that are about taking you to real places. Like we've done a lot of work with the United Nations, um, taking you to a Syrian refugee camp in Jordan where you can actually see what life is like on a daily basis. That's the future. Today, though, Facebook is the dominant provider of news to many people through its news feed. It's come under criticism for creating a bubble where you're only fed news that supports your views and for allowing fake news stories into its feed. Yes, social media has allowed much wider access to news, but at what cost? 